All right, in this video, I'm going to go over how to customize Material Design Light. So if you go over to getmdl.io, you go to their GitHub page, go to Wiki, and go to Customizing. This goes over installing it a little bit, and then right here we have this Customizing section. It says Customizing MDL is done through modifying the Material Design Light .scss file in the source folder. So for us, that would mean going in here into our Bower directory, go into Material Design Light, go into SRC, and down here we have this Material Design Light. So we click into here, we can uh, do any kind of customizations we want. If you keep reading, it says inside of the primary SAS file you can define variables that exist in the variables with a default option to override default options and measurements. So the first section here, say our project didn't use you know the snack bar, the slider, whatever. We could actually just comment these out and then run the gulp task that compiles this file and you know our file would be much shorter because we commented both of those out. That's all fine and dandy and if you go into the variable file you can see here what they're talking about with these default values here. So these are overridable. So in our material design we could you know we could create another file and do some of these overrides as well. Oops. But what happens when Material Design Lite comes out with a new version and we update it with our Bower, our Bower command? Well, that would mean if we made any changes to the Material Design Lite or the variables file, that all of our changes would get overridden. So instead of, what I like to do, instead of making changes to these actual Bower files, is I go into my, my style sheet in my uh, WordPress theme and I do the overrides there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So in our SAS directory, I'm going to close some of these folders, go into our style.scss here, and you can see here that we have this import material design light that we did several tutorials ago, which just imports this file. I'm going to, I'm going to close that file down, and let's go over how we can override some things. So in the Bower material design light, I'm going to go into the variables folder or file and let's go into let's just copy this right here preferred font command copy before I put this in here let's go to our front end here of our site and I'm going to inspect this element here go to the H2 and you can see right here that it's using font family Roboto right there so that's because in our in the variables file the preferred font to use is this font here. So notice it has that default, meaning that we can override it. So in here, let's put this in there and let's just take out the front in there. And oh, I need to make sure my gulp task is running. Gulp. Give that a second. All right, it's starting to watch. So let's save that file. You can see that our gulp task is complete. Now if we reload the front end, inspect this H2 again, inspect H2, you can see that it's using Helvetica now. So that was a super easy way to override the preferred font in our style sheet. So we didn't mess with any of the Bower files, so we can easily, when uh, MDL has a new update, we can go ahead and update that without anything being overwritten. And if they make any new changes or whatever, we can add our changes to this file. Pretty sweet. So the next thing you want to probably do, so I actually want to keep the preferred font. I was just showing you an easy way to do it. But what we want to do now is just go into this various variable file, and you can kind of just check out all the different things that we can change. So one of the main things we probably want to change is the color primary and the color accent. So let's go ahead and grab those. Command copy and put those into here and if we save that you notice that we get these errors in our output over here it says you know undefined variable palette indigo that's because our style sheet doesn't know anything about these variables right here so we actually need to include 
the color's definition so it can pick up these variables. So if you go into color definition, you can see here palette red, palette red dash 50, and it does every color for us, pink. So these are all the variables where they're defined. And you'll notice that in this variables file, that they include this color definition before they start writing these uh, variables down here. So we need to do the same thing. So let's copy this color definition. Command copy. Put that up here. Command save. You can see that our gulp test finished just fine. So now what we can do is go check out all these different color definitions and figure out what we want our colors to be. So you could easily go in here and like pick which one, but you don't know, you probably don't know what that color actually is. So what we need to do is go over to uh, material design and they should have some kind of color schemes for us. Let's go into here, style maybe, color. Look at this, here we go. So you can see here that if we go back to our file, our style sheet, palette indigo 500. So we go down to indigo 500, that'd be this color right here. So let's change some things up a little bit. Let's go, let's do palette till 500. Palette till 500. Palette till, instead of this pink, let's do like a, let's do green. Green, 900, and we actually don't need these defaults, that's where we pulled them from. So these are gonna be our overrides. So let's save that. Our gulp task is completed. Now if we reload the front end of our site, there you go, you see that it changed all of our colors to the colors that we picked. Pretty simple and easy way. So now that we have the color definitions in here, we can go to the variables file. And we can check out all the different things that we can change. We can literally change all kinds of different things. So you can go through that file, pick some things that you want to change and customize your theme pretty simple and easy way to you know, make your theme custom to what you want it to look like. For now I'm just going to keep it the default colors that uh, Material Design Lite comes with but now you know how to change those colors. So I'm going to end this tutorial here and we'll move on in the next.